Hello again, it's Tubal Kane. Today I'm going to give you the second video on uh, the milling machine. And in the last video I showed you how to perfectly center the spindle of the uh, machine, this is a bridge board, with uh, a hole. Now this hole was already bored in here and now today we're going to bore it out to a larger size. It's an inch and an eighth right now and we're going to bore it out to an inch and a quarter. Now I won't take you through the entire machining operation because it would take too long. But uh, the other day when I centered this with an indicator, the same time I zeroed it out on my uh, digital readout and uh, I even left it that way overnight in case somebody went by the machine and bumped it or whatnot. So I know that it's still perfectly centered. So that's something you, may, you might want to consider as well. In one of the next videos, we're going to drill a bolt circle on this piece. Otherwise, this actually could be very easily bored on the lathe. So, but we're doing it on the milling machine simply to show you how to do it. And uh, that way the bolt circle can be uh, drilled in the same setup. So today we'll talk about uh, boring heads and boring bars before we start the boring. I hope this demonstration on boring isn't boring, but uh, at any rate, I'm going to take you through quite a few details here. These are uh, some boring heads that I have. I have three boring heads, and this is all three of them. Uh, they're all three Criterion brand, which are kind of my favorite, but there'd be other major brands that are good, and I suppose even some of the foreign ones. But uh, uh, you look at, uh, at these. This uh, smaller one here has a half-inch uh, hole and so it'll hold a half inch boring bars and it's got a three quarter inch shank and it's a relatively small one. Uh, the one that I like here also fairly small but it holds uh, three eighths boring bars and there are three holes in which the boring bar can be held. One, two, and then there's also one on the side. You got to remember this with any boring head that as you uh, offset the boring bar and you increase your uh, diameter of your hole it becomes uh, off center and often will vibrate so you need to run your machine accordingly slow. This one also has a three-quarter shank which lends itself very well for the bridge port just put it in a three-quarter collet. And the third one here we're not going to use today is quite a nice boring head but uh, it has a shank on there that goes into my royal tooling. That's a royal shank. Now that shank of course can be removed and a different shank put on there but since I have several boring heads there's no need to do that. Okay one thing I forgot to mention uh, a moment ago is that uh, in regards to your digital readout, now some of you may not have a digital readout, but I told you I set that on zero, and a nice thing about doing that is that just a moment ago I had I installed the uh, uh, boring head, and in order to get it in there I would have had to lower the table, or in my case what I did is I moved the table in the x-axis a little bit, and then after I had installed the boring head, then I just reset it to zero here and it was just as accurate as can be so that's one little side light that we got here. Okay and then the next thing I wanted to tell you is that you got to determine whether your boring head is direct reading and by that I mean it's a, a similar to a lathe uh, cross feed when you move the lathe cross feed in on a direct reading dial if you move it in one thousandth that means it's going to take off a thousand so in reality it's actually moving in uh, half a thousand. Similarly on this boring head I put a, uh, a dial indicator on there and then on this side just to double check I cranked it in ten thousandths. Now notice that this uh, indicator is on zero. Now I'm going to get down real close here and turn I know you can't see that but I'm going to move it in ten thousandths. And I have done that but now the indicator itself has moved five thousandths, showing you that this is direct reading. That is to say, when you move it in ten thousandths, 
it's actually going to take off ten thousandths. I hope that was clear to you, but that's why I put the indicator on there. Now I want to say just a few things about uh, boring bars before we start. And uh, I misspoke a few minutes ago when I said that some of these had a 3 8 shank. In fact, that they were half inch shanks. And uh, if you have a whole bunch of boring bars, and I hope you do, uh, sometimes they come in a set. And uh, here's a set that has uh, our various lengths, and they have half inch shanks, and they are carbide dipped. Now, over here we have a slightly larger set, and they are 5 8 shank. And, uh, different lengths again and not all of these are carbide tipped but also included in this set are some regular boring bars that would hold uh, high speed steel. There's two of those in there. I'm not a big fan of those. I particularly like these boring bars that my brother Jan and Cody Wyoming gave to me and they're made by the uh, APT company. They can be used in a lathe or in a milling machine and uh, the carbide and ju they're just really nice uh, boring bars. Use as short a one and stiff a one as possible for whatever your application is to cut down on vibration and chatter. This uh, black, longer black boring bar here is actually a lathe boring bar but it can be used in the boring head as well. Okay I have installed a boring bar in the head tightened it down. I had to use the middle position here but of course this causes quite a bit of, of uh, outreach here and there are times when I would run out of travel in boring a hole and then would have to reposition the boring bar and, uh, and s into the next hole and start over. So don't feel bad if you got to do that. This little uh, Allen wrench here fits both the screws that tighten the boring bar and the adjustment screw. 